You know those movies that have a lot of chatter about how great it is. And then you finally watch it and it's like, this what y'all was talking about? Yeah. Dan it, Dan it. Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it. I like that. It's going to be my theme song. Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Batman. The Edge of Seventeen came out in 2016 to rave reviews. I mean, top of the line. I never necessarily had the desire to watch it, but I wouldn't say it's something I was opposed to. And because it has been requested, this Blush Bunny presents The Edge of Seventeen. Going into this film, two things crossed my mind because you can see them coming a mile away. I said to myself in the first, I don't know, 10 minutes, let me guess, her dad died. Whenever a mother and daughter don't get along, the dad has to die in order to force them to interact. And by interact, I mean argue about how much they hate each other and avoiding their problems until their inevitable blow up. Then I said, let me make another prediction, since I'm on a roll here. Her only friend in the world is going to fall for her hot brother. Because why else would she only have one friend and a hot brother? If you've seen the film, then you know that moments after I made my prediction, these things transpired. Well, not completely, but you know, the start of it. But even with these trope setups, there is still one huge problem with the film. It is a film about nothing. A whole bunch of nothing happens. I usually start these videos with an introduction to the synopsis for those who haven't seen it, but I was a little stumped because after it ended, I couldn't put into words what the movie was about. Is it about a girl navigating through high school obstacles? Is it about a girl's rocky relationship with her parents? Is it about the perils of sibling rivalry? Is it about the ups and downs of friendship? Is it about a misguided search of love? Now, some of you may be thinking or even saying out loud, girl, it's literally about all of the above. Why are you being so nitpicky? Did you not watch the film? You know what? Dislike, unsubscribe, you always complaining about something. Don't unsubscribe. Don't unsubscribe. Don't unsubscribe. And please click like. Just click click the like. Let's talk about this. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but follow me with this for a second. Yes, the movie is technically all of the above but it doesn't amount to anything and i don't mean that in the way of there needs to be some big finale because as we know those can be super corny at times and it takes you out of the feel of the movie the edge of 17 feels like a moment in time there's no grand opening there's no grand closing and the climax is anticlimactic at best let's just call a thing a thing there's nothing driving the plot of the film. There are a couple of things that contribute to this. For one, the underdeveloped characters. And again, I think it's because the filmmakers are relying on the, we're at the scene of the crime and we're going to take you along with this thing, but it falls short. Let's take Nadine's best friend, Krista, for example. She's introduced as the one person that actually wanted to be her friend. The person who she related to and relied on most. But this gets derailed because Krista sleeps with her brother. The thing about it is, when this happens, I don't really care. I don't care at all, actually. I couldn't care less. Okay, I'm doing too much. It's not that deep. Let me reel it in. But as a viewer, this doesn't affect me. Why? Because the audience doesn't see much between Krista and Nadine to begin with for there to be an emotional attachment to their relationship. Nadine feels betrayed, but I'm just sitting there like, okay. Had there been a scene where they were hanging out and we saw a moment between them like, wow, it's really them against the world, then my reaction would have been different, which takes me to the relationship between Krista and Darian. It comes out of nowhere. Like there's no precursor to how this comes to be. Nadine has been ragging on her brother and we get nothing from Krista. There's not a, well, actually, he looks kind of cute today. Or a, is Darian home? Is Darian going to be there? Nothing that shows she has the slightest interest in him. So as their relationship builds to the demise of Nadine and Krista's friendship, it doesn't feel like it's worth it. But 
It also doesn't even read as a dilemma. So making her choose between her friend and her boyfriend is pointless because it's like, based on what we are seeing, she doesn't have a strong relationship with either of them. So who cares? And then the other weird part about this whole shebang was the fact that after Krista and Darian sleep together, people are all of a sudden interested in being Krista's friend. So it was like, does the whole school know already? Where is this coming from? That plot point was thrown in there to drive a wedge between Krista and Nadine, but it didn't have much meat to it. The other thing that contributes to the film's emptiness is that there is not a focal point. Yes, Nadine is the main character, but why? What is the end game here? What is the audience supposed to be getting out of this? Because honestly, in the end, everything just works out, but it's like, why? Did she go on some deep soul searching binge while taking a hike? Where did the introspective, the world is not about me and the people in my life aren't that bad, light bulb come from? I was left with those thoughts. But to be honest with you, it's not a bad film. I know somebody is like, you just said it wasn't about anything. Listen, two things can be true. Just don't go in with huge expectations as I did. There is a certain level of comfort that comes with it as one of the Blush Bunnies stated on Instagram. I think this in large comes from the relationship between Nadine and her teacher, played by the great Woody Harrelson. You know when you see him, there's gonna be laughs with a serious tone delivering dry humor. When the film begins, we are introduced to their relationship. Her teacher is the type who, when she graduates, they will be lifelong friends. Strictly platonic, nothing weird, but just her homeboy. There's no sugarcoating with him. No, I'm going to talk to you like this because I'm a teacher and you're a student and that's the way this is supposed to go. Nah, none of that. He just gives it straight up and down like six o'clock. He lets her be whatever she assumes just is, and he provides a safe space for her. It was pretty refreshing to see. Not to mention the chemistry between Haley and Woody was perfect. I can only imagine how many times they broke character while filming. Something else that I surprisingly found comforting, this movie kind of taps into the nerdy best friend who's in love with you thing, except Erwin is not her best friend and we don't get much of them together, but I think the subtlety of them getting to know each other works. His nervous energy juxtaposed to her having some sort of confidence for once. However, comma, there was a teensy weeny flaw in there. Nadine is a pretty girl, the type of pretty that most people would agree on. She definitely looks like she plays any mini miny mo in the dark when she's picking out her clothes, but that's workable. But you mean to tell me that all this time, no one has been interested in her? Not one person until this guy she's been going to school with for years asked her where she got her hoodie from? I'm not buying it. They should have came better than that. There's even a part in the movie where she's at a party and this random person tells her that she and her brother remind her of the movie Twins. And Nadine's like, oh, the movie with the tall guy and the short, funny looking one? And the girl's like, yeah, that's you and your brother. Girl, bye. But anyways, in the end, would I recommend this movie? Yeah, I'd say it's Blush Bunny approved. It's one of those movies you watch on a rainy day. You curl up in bed, order Chinese food, and just get lost in the abyss of nothingness. That is the edge of 17. What is it about it that makes you go, this is a good movie? Let me know down below. I'm curious to know. To be clear, it's an enjoyable movie. It just had its, I just had questions, I should say. Check out the Blush Bunny merch store and follow the Blush Bunny podcast. It's pretty much the same format of the YouTube channel, just without the video. Also, check out the community post where I ask for movie recommendations. That's where I pulled this request from. Of course, you can always just leave a comment, but that's the hub for right now. With all of that being said, if you haven't done so already, be sure to click like and hop on over to that subscribe button and hit the bell. Otherwise, YouTube will never show you my videos. As always, 
I'm all ears. Until next time. Bye. Listen. Oh my God. Why is the card? It's always something. I cannot. <laughs>